Good morning, everybody. Aaron Zauber here, Fully Alive Coaching, Fully Alive TV. We've got another 30 minutes or so here that I'm going to share some perspectives on authenticity and courage. And I'm going to tell a little bit about my experience with that. I've put myself into quite a few daring situations in my life, um, including even this moment right now. I mean, every time the camera starts and you know, here I am to speak with you, there's this kind of plunge that I feel like I'm taking. I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. It's a surprise to me and to you both. So here we are in this moment, already immersed in a little bit of courage. And I also want to invite you. So we'll, we'll do a few things. I'm going, to, I'm going to talk about, like I said, the subject. I'm going to read um, a few paragraphs from my new favorite book that um, I'll explain more in a minute. It's, got, it's called Immortal Self. It's, it's about a guy who went to the to the Himalayas, to a hidden valley of immortal masters. So believe that or not, but uh, I think you'll enjoy some of the wisdom from the pages there. And we'll do a little body scan like usual, a little somatic meditation. And maybe we'll take some callers. I put out a, a, big, a big post on Facebook and I, and I shared the number. Some of you might even be watching. That would be pretty cool from the, from the Facebook post there. Uh, there's a there's a number that you can call in. Uh, it's uh, I'll give it to you now, so you can write this down. You can type it into your phone, and we'll just hear your voice. Um, but I'd like to have a conversation where we can talk about some of what I'm talking about today, and we can have a conversation about your goals and your dreams. And maybe you want to follow my example if you are inspired by, you know, this random dude coming up here and, and sharing whatever he has to share. Maybe you want to share some of your perspective and we can, we can work with that and explore it. As I've mentioned on previous episodes, that's where my gift really lies. It's not so much in coming up here and, and having words to speak. Uh, my gift is really in the listening. I've been, for the past six months or so, I've been networking pretty heavily and I put out these Facebook posts and you know, do a little social media stuff. Um, and, I, and I talk about what I do. And it's, uh, it's been incredibly challenging to explain it, partially because I don't really understand it myself. It's an experience. And how do you explain an experience to someone? What I, what I do know about it, or one way of framing it, is basically when I have a conversation, a consciousness conversation with someone, and explore their reality. What happens is I offer this, this gift, this rare service of deep listening. How often do you feel deeply heard and deeply listened to in your life? That's something that I do with people. And I offer uncommon curiosity that's been finely tuned and highly trained through intentional plunges that I've taken in my life I've said some, you know, I've, I've, I've said a little bit about them in past episodes, but I'll talk more about it now and today. Um, and, I, and I offer that. And when I connect this awareness with your awareness, what happens is an amplified experience of reality. An amplified experience. So the volume on what's happening in the direct experience of the moment gets turned up. And it gets louder so we can hear it. We can experience it in a new way. And what that allows over time is more clarity, a greater sense of purpose, more energy, more consciousness, better relationships, and ultimately self-knowledge and self-realization. That's what, that's what the experience is. 
So if you want, if any of those things sound nice, if you might like to experience any of that, I want to invite you to call in. Um, the phone number, again, you can grab a, just grab your cell phone and type it in. That's the easiest way. It's 919-518-9773. And you can just give me a call and we'll have a, a fun conversation or I don't, I can't promise it'll be fun. It might be, uh, you know, it might be, it might take some courage. I mean, talking with me is, is, um, it's, I'm, I'm gentle and compassionate as you may be able to pick up. Um, I, uh, you know, the reason why I can have these conversations with people is because I've encountered a lot of suffering myself in life. Um, a lot of which, and maybe even all of which, if you believe in soul contracts and, and, you know, if I've agreed to the experience of life that I've had and the particular traumas that I've picked up, especially in my younger years, um, you know, maybe I chose all of it. It's a, an empowering perspective to take. Um, either way, I've encountered a lot of suffering in my life. A lot of it consciously and intentionally just thrown myself into, into crazy situations so that I could learn and so that I could experience, experience the rawness of life so that I could learn what it means to be fully alive. That's, that's the point for me. That's why I do everything that I do. What does it mean to be here, to experience this life in a human body with all of you, you know, in connection? We don't know ourselves until we know another, you know, until we can see ourselves and experience ourselves in the reflection of someone else. So that's what I do. And, and um, if you'd like to experience an amplified version of your reality in this container of curiosity and compassion that I'm offering, you can call that number 919-518-9773. Um, I'm also offering for a limited time, even though time is illusionary, uh, if you've ever experienced you know, some of these timeless moments, um, you, you might understand what I mean about illusionary time. But so even though time is limited, for a limited time, I'm offering a few free sessions, um, kind of a, yeah, just a free session so that you can experience what I'm talking about, this greater sense of purpose and clarity, better relationships, more energy and consciousness. Um, and if you like that, if you think you might like that kind of conversation, in a less sort of public forum, you can email me at Aaron at fullyalive.coach. So that's a special extension. It's not .com. It's .coach. Aaron at fullyalive.coach. And, um, and we, can, you know, we can probably have a, a little conversation about that. That's what I care about in this world. What, I'm, what I want to create is a world where people are empowered where a little bit at a time, they take more responsibility for who they are and for where they're going. And they learn how to unwind the conditioning that they've accumulated over the years that causes suffering. To use an analogy, it's kind of like a car. You know, imagine your body is like a car. Your nervous system is sort of like the engine. And over time, the engine accumulates debris, okay? And it's based on experience. It's not based on age. It's based on experience and the intensity of the experience. And some of us, if, if you're like me, you take in a lot of information. And, and it's a, it's a double-edged sword. It's a sort of a blessing and a curse. There's, um, to take in a lot of information is, it's a powerful thing. It's, it's having a, a, a highly sensitive instrument. What happens is the experiences, just like in a, an engine of a car, they can get stuck in our bodies and they can cause suffering. And we develop beliefs. You know, we see things that happen in the world and we develop reference experiences for beliefs that cause suffering. There's an idea that we have. Okay, this is how a belief works we have an idea and then we see things in life. We experience situations that confirm that belief. And then we really start to believe it 
And that idea gets reinforced over and over. It, it goes from an idea to a hypothesis to a theory to a law in our, in our body. And, you know, if it's really a law or not depends, right? Because people have different experiences and, and they believe different things. We can't really blame them because they are just who they are. They've accumulated these experiences, in, these experiences in their life. But the truth of the matter is some of these experiences cause, or some of these beliefs, based on the experiences they have, cause suffering. It's no fault of their own. It's just karma. It just It is what it is. It's the human condition, if you want to call it that. Well, I believe that we can unlock that conditioning. We can get free of it. And what happens when we let go of that conditioning, in my experience, sometimes, some, you know, I have had experiences where it's joyous. And, and I don't want us to get locked into the belief that it has to be painful when we let go of old beliefs. Because maybe it doesn't. You know, maybe we can, instead of, instead of crying tears of, of sorrow and sadness and, you know, losing that belief, maybe we can cry tears of joy. The, the truth of the matter is that it's often an, an intense experience because those beliefs, they've been, again, locked in. They've been kind of tied down. This is, think about it. When we're talking about letting go of something, well, what's the opposite of letting go? It's holding on. So literally, we're holding on. There's tension in our nervous system. Okay, just like we're clutching, we're grasping, we're clinging. And when we hold on to something for a long time, imagine holding on to a railing suspended above a, a you know, you're at the, an 80 foot bridge and you're holding on to a railing and you've got the rushing waters below. And you think, if I let go of this railing, of this belief, I'm going to experience some pain. So that's a plunge that we might take. Okay, so to let go of our holding on in our nervous system, which is, which is at an unconscious level. It takes some degree of courage. There's two ingredients, authenticity and courage. And, you know, what happens is we fight it. And we fight it for a good reason, because for us, in our mind, in our unconscious, in the unconscious parts of our mind, it feels as though we're holding on to a railing suspended over 80 feet of water, and we don't know if we're going to survive if we let go of that railing. Let me tell you, I've let go of a lot of railings in my life. I've helped people let go of a lot of railings in their lives. So far, all of us have survived. And what we've found on the other side is more freedom. Because, again, the, the truth of the matter is that it takes a lot of effort to cling on. You know, what's tough about it is that it's not a conscious mind. You know, if you think about this, this railing analogy I'm using, we can make a conscious decision to just let go, right, and fall. With the unconscious mind, with the nervous system, with, with these experiences and these beliefs and these ideas that are stored in our, in our body and the tissues, you know, they say the issues are in your tissues. It's... In my experience, it's a little, it's been a little bit more complicated than simply just letting go. It's taken a conversation. It's taken someone holding one pole in this polarity, holding the positive pole while someone else can, can go into the negative pole. You know, me holding that belief, that unwavering commitment to the beauty and the truth of who you really are. I know that in my soul that who you really are is someone more beautiful and more powerful than we can express in words. So I come in with that knowledge, that deep knowledge in my heart and in my bones, and I shine that on someone's authenticity and their courage to be real about the ideas that they're holding on to. And, and that are exhausting them because the energy to maintain that clinging, you know, they're ready to let go. It, it almost feels like a form of giving up or even defeat. I've experienced some of that myself. People I've talked to have experienced some of that where it's, 
again, it's just it's this counterintuitive thing. What I'm talking about is a is sort of a, a masculine and feminine energy, or a, you know, call it a light and dark energy. And we're confused in our culture because what we're conditioned to believe is that we're supposed to be positive all the time. You know, what if someone came to you and they were just like, bro, I've, uh, I've got some, some really great self-help material for you here. It's going to change your life. All you need to do is keep the lights on all the time. Okay, I've got a 100,000 lumen light, which, by the way, is about the amount of light that's coming off the sun in the mid-afternoon when it's at its brightest point. So I've got this 100,000 lumen light, and we're going to keep it with you all the time, no matter if it's day or night. You know, I, I know you're, gonna, you're trying to sleep in, in your room there, but I've got this light because, because I want you to be positive all the time. And, you know, this whole sleeping business and this whole calming down and resting and digesting business, who needs that? You know, we over here, we want to be positive all the time. So if we heard that, we would intuitively know that's not a sustainable solution. That's not going to work in the long term. And that used to be me. I used to think that no matter what, I had to be positive all the time. And you know what happened to me? At 26 years old, I burned out my adrenal glands that produce energy in the body, cortisol, adrenaline. I had one or two hours of energy a day for, uh, for a couple months. It was very difficult. I was in bed most of the time. I was severely depressed. I didn't know what to do. And um, I didn't really, this was before I, I knew some of these practices that I know now about, about going down. Because, you know, we want to go up. We want to be positive. We want it to be sunshine and rainbows and unicorns and Skittles or, you know, whatever other positive metaphor you want to think of. And that's a beautiful thing. It's beautiful. The masculine pole, masculine polarity of life is gorgeous. And, and, and we should never, we should strive to never say one or the other is, is, is too much or is bad. Cause you know what? They all have their place. But when it's daytime, it needs to be daytime. And when it's nighttime, turn off that light. Turn off that 100,000 lumen light and rest. And, we, and what we need as a culture is to learn how to do that in an emotional sense. You have a right brain and a left brain inside your body. Okay? The right brain, that's the seat of the negative emotions. The left brain is the seat of the positive emotions. And you can look this up. There's a great book called The Emotional Life of Your Brain. It's written by two or three doctors, psychology, you know, neurobio neurobiologists, Dr. Johnson. I don't remember their names, but the emotional life of your brain. And they did a lot of research and they saw traumatic brain injuries on either side and the effects that it produced. And, and it is not healthy to be positive all the time. They call that mania. That's, that's not, it's, it's not sustainable and it's very disconnecting. The right brain is the seat of the negative emotions and we need balance. So what we've forgotten in our sort of hyper-masculine conditioned society, which means there's an imbalance on the feminine side. We need to get it back in balance. And we don't need to go, you know, the future is feminine and, and we just, you know, we all need to be feminists now. We don't need to do that any more than we all need to be masculinists. We need to be balanced people if we're interested in sustainability. And maybe you have a different interest. That's fine. You're on a different path. But what we're trying to, what I'm trying to create here is balance, sustainability, flow, harmony. I want to see a world where it's not men over women or women over men or, you know, this, this, this polarity where we don't know how to get along with each other. But it starts in our bodies, learning how to balance these vehicles and heal these vehicles for experiencing life and getting in right relationship with this body, the one that you're walking through the world with. And that starts with a courageous conversation with yourself whether that's through somatic meditation, okay, a conversation without words, or whether that's, that's a, an honest, authentic conversation with someone, someone close to you, or a conversation with someone like me who's highly trained and finely tuned and able to really get in there with you in a deeply compassionate way and pop you out of some of these old programs that are no longer serving you, if you know what I mean. 
And the result of that is more energy. You're not expending all that energy on hanging on to that, that pole over the 80 foot bridge anymore. But you can take a deep breath in, you can breathe, and you can go about your life in a more relaxed way. And then instead of working so hard, you can be working smarter. I'm talking about leveraging your life and letting life work more for you instead of you fighting against it. We're conditioned to fight it. You know, if you see these phrases about positive vibes only. So there's a grain of truth. And let's not be too quick to, you know, to condemn people, right? Most people say judge people. You know, it's, I won't go off on that rabbit trail too much. But let's not be quick to condemn because there's a grain of truth. But, but life is a paradox. And these truths are, are paradoxical. So wherever we see a very strong position on, on one hand, there's an equal and opposing position on the other hand. Okay, so the, the grain of truth about the positive vibes only philosophy or, or, or orientation is this, is that you have the power of choice and you get to choose where you want to live. Okay, and, and you can use the law of attraction to focus your beautiful mind on what you want to energize and where you put your attention. Attention, what's, what's the phrase? Attention goes, energy flows where attention goes. That's it. Energy goes where attention flows. So put your beautiful mind on what you want to energize. That's what we're doing here. We're putting our minds on what we want to see more of. And notice when you focus on something you don't want, that maybe you're actually energizing that thing. Now, here's the other important part to this. And this is really, this is, this is I feel like, what, what we need to understand. Because because if you've been in the self-development world for any length of time, you've heard the law of attraction and you understand some of these, these simple and, and, and very helpful tools about the positive psychology and you know, the focus and how that energizes. Here's what we need to learn. Here's the opportunity. We got to learn how to go down. We got to learn how to appreciate the dark. And we've got to learn that the dark is, is here for us. And we've got to learn or we can choose to learn, rather. We don't have to do anything. We don't got to learn, but we can choose to learn how to be with the feminine side of life. And that's what it is. It's being with. You know, it's, it's not really understanding. You know, maybe we'll be lucky enough to, to get some of that on the back end of going through these experiences. And the vehicle for the, for the feminine, for, for being with the feminine and allowing that fuel to energize our lives instead of us trying to fight it and avoid it and, you know, over, overcompensate with this macho positive vibes only thing. The, the, the practice to do that is going to be feminine attributes like patience, like experience, like connection. You notice how when someone you love is in some, some degree of, of negative emotion, you know, maybe they're feeling down or sad or something's bothering them. Notice how that actually creates a lot of connection. And, and that's really kind of more, you know, if you think about feminine qualities, connection is really kind of more of a feminine quality, isn't it? Again, think right brain, right brain, left side of body, body, mind, it's all one. So, so the practice is, for allowing life to energize us, for allowing, I just, I, you know, with life, it's like the feminine is life. The, you know, the, 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 the challenges, the, the, um, the experience of it all, the intensity, the, the, the vibrations, the, the, the earth, you know, we call it mother earth. It, this is the feminine and it's not, easy to explain. We try and we make some progress, right? We have science now, so we can explain some things. But really, ultimately, what do we know? We have what we know, but then we have what we experience. And, and that's the opportunity for us. So let's do, um, you know what, actually, this is a good time to read the, the passage. So I'm going to give out the number again. I want to make the make the offer again that I'm offering here. Um, 
the number, if you want to call in, is 919-518-9773. So you can just plug that into your cell phone and give me a call. Let me know what you think. Let me know um, some questions you have or you know a comment. Um, I want to get curious about your world and what's going on for you, your dreams. I, you know, I'll just probably, I'll ask you, what's your dream? How's that going? That's, that's what I do. And, and that starts down the path of, of the feminine, of the connection, of the experience, of being with what's really happening in a new way and allowing for that opportunity. It might take a little courage to do that, but that's, you know, that's the key. I, I will say before I read this passage, so this, this post, I, you know, I've, for years, I've been posting on Facebook, little things, social media. And I, I've noticed that whenever I try to sort of say something pithy or say something that I think might get a lot of likes, I get the least amount of likes, the least number of likes that I, that I ever get. And whenever I go on there and I just tell it like it is and I'm just real, wow, it, it blows up a lot more. And I get, you know, people like from last night when I, when I shared the thing that I shared and I can, and I can talk a little bit about it here. Um, I just, I was, I felt fear, which by the way, is the definition of courage. You know, sometimes people think that courage is, is this idea of fearlessness. That's not true. Take it from someone who's, who's done a lot of crazy things and put myself in a lot of situations that require courage, like going out over a thousand nights to bars and clubs, sober, most of the time approaching women. In my teenage years, I, I experienced a lot of rejection and I decided to do something about it. And like everything I've done in my life, um, I've just gone very deeply into it. So that's something I did. And, um, and for me, that took a lot of courage going from you know, thinking I had a bad personality and having no idea what being myself even meant. You know, people would tell me that. They would just say, they would say, why don't you just be yourself, Aaron? And I didn't even know what that meant. I, I had no idea. I still don't always know. But, but what I learned through doing that, through putting myself in that plunge, is that I can be myself. You know, what that means to be ourselves is to be honest about what we think, what we feel, what we want, what we don't want, very simple things, and just being honest about it. And there's levels of it. You know, consciousness is a, it, there's a stair-step process that happens into opening our consciousness. And, and it happens a little bit at a time for most of us on purpose. Because it, it can be very intense to take in that amount of information. Um, you know, right, right now, with the amount of somatic practices, body awareness practices I've done and trauma work and shadow work and, and just all the things that I've done in the last 10, 20 years. Because I really started this journey when I was 10 years old and I committed to change my personality. When I walk into a room, almost immediately energy starts flowing off of my fingers. I mean, I feel electricity just, just coming off my hands. And, uh, and it's intense. The experience of life is very intense for me. It always has been. It's part of the reason I burned down my adrenals at, as a kid, you know, at 26 years old. So, <clears throat> so consciousness, it needs to be a step-by-step -step thing. And this impatience that we have is really, a, sometimes it's really a block because again, the feminine, the experience of being with life requires patience. It requires just sitting. Okay, so this is a good segue. I'll come back to the, to the social media stuff because I think there's some good stuff to share there. But uh, while I'm reading this, if someone wants to call in, again, um, I, I invite you, I challenge you to have a conversation with me. And, uh, and, and if you can't tell by my voice and by the vibes that I give off, I'm a very gentle, compassionate person. And, um, and I'll just be gently curious with you. And we'll ask about your dreams and how that's going. That's all I really want to know. We'll follow, you know, we'll follow the curiosity from there. And you can comment on what you're hearing um, and have a little. You know, that'll change your day. If you call in today and talk to me, well, that's going to be eventful. That might make your day. It'll make mine. So, so there's that. So that phone number, if you want to call, grab your cell phone, just pop it in. 919-518-9773. And we'll just hear your voice. So this book is, um, for, for years, I've read 15 to 20 books a year. I've always been an avid, avid reader. 
And then a year or so ago, uh, after, after several months of, of somatic meditation, I stopped reading much at all because I began to take in so much information through my body that getting it in the bite-sized chunks through my intellect, just it's been on the back burner. I'm sure at some point I'll start reading again. I love to read. It's just um, I'm learning a new way of receiving information. However, there's one book that I've read that I want to recommend to anyone on a truly conscious path. I have no affiliation with these people. I just loved the book. Uh, this guy, Ar- Aravinda Himadra, went to the valley, to a hidden valley in the Himalayas and met immortal masters. So the book is called Immortal Self. And I'm going to read, uh, at the end of the book, he's, he's meeting with an immortal master. And the master is, uh, is telling him just some of the, just telling him some of his thoughts. He asks him, the, uh, this guy who's visiting, he says, Grandfather, I told you that I had hoped to see you also for all those I love and will yet come to love. What should I tell them about you when I see them? He answered, tell them very little about me, for I am not definable. Say to them that I am not here, but that I am everywhere. Then say it is better in life to be nothing than to strive to be anything. Advise them to abandon their useless pursuits and accept what is given. How can the blind know what they want? Is it not true that the great mother in her undying love would give infinitely more to her child than the child could ever imagine through limited pursuits? Receive in gratitude what is given and the heavens will open. I'll skip down. Actually, I'll I'll read one more here. He continued, show them that they should bear no evil thoughts for another. All blame and wrongdoing must fall on the impure mind. Beneath the workings of the unclean intention is the same self that lives in all. Is it possible to condemn that self without condemning the one? To know this simple truth, forgiveness comes easily and compassion may finally dawn in the place of hatred. And then the evil that one might do will be no more. So I'm going to skip down to the final paragraph. And tell them this too. If you choose to seek me, then first seek yourself. If you cannot sit still, then search near and far until you have exhausted your every effort. Then take your seat and enter silence. Then abandon your trivial wants and put your ear to the silent sea within. Relinquish all effort for the waiting streams of bliss. For surely they are there. And soon you will see it is my hand in yours that has come to bring you home. And your hand in mine that brings contentment. It's really a beautiful book. There's a lot of wisdom in that book, whether you believe in immortal masters or not. Uh, I definitely recommend checking that book out. It's made a big difference for me. That's the third time I've read that passage, and every time I'm just, I can't help myself. It's just really wise, beautiful, true words. Okay, so with that being said, this is a, a great segue into the somatic meditation. So we'll come into some silence ourselves. Um, if you're with me, you can just follow along, and you can take a seat with your back fairly straight. The most important thing is, is just get into a relaxed position. And this is going to help you access some of the wisdom that lives inside of you. If you're willing to meet it there, you know, if you would like to seek and find, right? Ask and the door will be opened to you. So this is a way of of waiting patiently to allow life to energize you. 
And this practice over time, you know, we'll just do five, 10 minutes here. But this practice over time has allowed for me and for, for many people who are doing this practice and similar practices for the tension that we're holding on to in our, in our bodies to gently rise to the surface and get cleared away. And that allows for more freedom, for more contact with the streams of bliss, for more, more relationship, more intimacy with whom you really are deep inside, which is so beautiful. So with that context, uh, you, can, you can lie down on your back with your knees up, uh, with your knees just touching kind of together like that and your feet flat on the ground. Just put your knees up, touching. And, um, and I do this practice about 45 minutes every morning. Sometimes I'll do that a couple times a day. And, or you can just sit down and do it. That's fine too. It's good. Just make sure you're relaxed. And if you can, close your eyes and gently put your awareness into your feet. And just notice, notice your breath and imagine that there's an inner awareness that's beginning to fill your feet. Notice your toes. You know, even the middle toes and the pinky toe. Just gently notice the sensations in your whole foot. The band that connects your toes together. The arch of your foot. The heel your ankles. Again, imagining that there's an inner breath that's moving through your feet as you breathe your regular breath. And invite any tension to relax and let go. And simply be with the sensations in your feet. Allow your awareness to gently rise into your ankles and lower legs. Feeling your calves and shins. Notice the weight of your bones. Notice your knees. And invite, invite your knees down through your lower legs and your feet. Invite all that to let go and relax into the moment as you cultivate your awareness, your inner awareness. You tap into the wisdom in your body. Notice your upper legs. Again, really feeling the sensations in and around your skin and the tissues, the ligaments and tendons and joints. Maybe even feeling into the bones themselves, the marrow. Every cell in your body has an innate wisdom as well as space around it. Tap into it and gently feel it from the inside and relax. Noticing your entire legs, your pelvis, breathing into your whole lower body. Noticing how when you put your attention in your body, that your thoughts automatically drift away. And you don't have to try to stop them or control them. But when you 
Allow your awareness to rest within. There's a natural resting that occurs in your mind. And you can come here anytime. Notice your intestines. Take a, maybe you want to take a deep breath into your intestines. Just inviting your, the organs in your lower torso to relax and let go of any tension, any holding that might be there. Noticing your low belly, the lower dantian, the hara, as it's known, and invite it to relax. Bringing your curiosity, your inner awareness, noticing your mid chest now, it's moving up. In the lower back and your back. Just breathing into your torso, in and around your heart area. Imagining again this inner breath is cleansing and nourishing your insides. Letting go of any tension you notice. Coming up into the upper chest and upper back, shoulder blades and shoulders. Noticing the world of sensations that was just waiting for you to look. And feeling your shoulders. Upper arms and elbows. Notice how relaxing it is to bring your awareness back to your body. And whenever it starts to wander, whenever the thoughts come up, just bring your awareness back. Back to the body. That's it. It's the whole practice. Back to the sensations without judgment, just noticing. Feeling your forearms and hands. Using that inner breath. Noticing your neck and throat. Your jaw. in your face. If you're like me, it feels like I could spend three hours just right there, the face and jaw, the eyes, back of the head, even the ears. Just send the ears some love, some pure presence. Finally, the top of the head, full body, from the toes to the top of the head. Let's take, let's take three breaths together, conscious breaths. Just do one more with me now. So this practice has really changed my life. It's made me more perceptive, more sensitive. It's harder to lie to myself because I can feel the wisdom from my body telling me 
telling me things. Maybe my, you know, my intellect doesn't want to hear it or doesn't want to listen. But my mind is, I mean, my, uh, my body is giving me wisdom. And it does the same for all of us if we're willing to listen. And it doesn't have to be all the time. You know, again, everything with balance and moderation. I like to say even moderation moderately, though. Maybe. So that every once in a while, it's okay not to have moderation. So we still have a few minutes if someone wants to call in. And we can have a conversation about your dreams and your goals. And also, like I, like I noted, in, noted in my post last night, the, uh, the message that I put out, I'm taking quite a, a leap of faith myself right now. What I'm, what I'm courageously building is, you know, is this, this offering that I have, this service. I'm just courageously putting it out there. Uh, it takes courage for me. It's, you know, it's a scary thing to, to just say, hello world, this is what I have to offer. If anyone wants to, you know, wants to, to try it out. And, um, and I'd love to offer that to a few people again for a limited time. I'm offering a free session where you can experience what I'm talking about here. More freedom and flow and maybe even more love and peace. So you can call in at... 919-518-9773. And uh, we can talk a for a few minutes about your goals. Or you can send me an email or find me on uh, social media. Just Google that, you know, Fully Alive Coaching is the company. And um, I'm taking a, a quite a leap of faith here. Over the next 60 days, I'm, I'm accepting a few more clients. And uh, again, like I said, offering a few of these sessions. So if someone wants to take me up on that and experience that, I'm happy to do that. And it's a, a no obligation sort of thing. I'm not about to try to pressure anyone into, into signing up with me. Um, I just want to offer the gift that I have in the world that means the most to me where I feel like I'm making a difference, I feel like my life matters when I'm able to bring my curiosity and presence and love and help people become more fully alive. That's maybe that's, that's definitely what I'm doing here for this illusionary amount of time on this planet is, uh, is exploring what it means to be fully alive. You know, putting putting myself out there and helping other people do the same thing, helping people take that leap. If you have a dream, something that you want to manifest, if you want to inject some more courage into your life, if you want to try something new, open yourself a little bit to be a little bit more authentic than feels appropriate, you know, a little bit more honest than you've been before, a little bit more real. And like I said, if it's, um, if you have an experience similar to mine and the people that I talk to, then we haven't lost anyone yet. And on the other side, there's a lot of freedom. There's more freedom, more presence. So this has been an, an awesome time. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Like I said, you can shoot me a quick email. Drop me a message at aaron at fullyalive.coach. Uh, that phone number that I shared is, um, you know, that's just, that's during the live show. So you can also, you can go to nissancommunications.com slash live um, to tune in whenever you want. There's a, a bunch of different shows on this network. So definitely check that out. And that number works for the shows. That's not my personal number, just in case there's any confusion out there. 
Uh, but I would love to hear from you. So, so look me up. And my wish for you going forward and for your week is to have a beautiful, peaceful, harmonious day that you might discover what it means to be increasingly more fully alive all the time. Talk to you soon. Over and out. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.